To what level are undercover police officers allowed to participate in crime to maintain their cover? This is a documentary about Joe Pistone, he is considered to be the most well-succeeded FBI agent to infiltrate in the Mafia. The fictionalized version is the famous film Donnie Brasco with Johnny Depp and Al Pacino. Highly underappreciated mob movie. Some of Pacino and Depp's best work. A family member worked for the DEA for 30 years, including before they were the DEA, and were BNDD, and from his old war stories, he did a lot of hard drugs while undercover. He also lost a partner with whom he was romantically involved, the agency encouraged this with Monday to Friday partners to help build credibility in their UC roles for several years, so he doesn't like to talk about a lot of his experiences, but from what I have learned, when he was trying to take down a major distributor, about the only thing he wasn't allowed to do was murder a civilian in cold blood. Have you read Donnie Brasco? The book goes into detail about how Agent Pasconi deals with this. He is keen to prevent crimes from happening, but allows things to slide and occasionally commits non-violent robberies and heists to cement his standing with a group of thieves. As he moves higher up the criminal ladder he does his best to stop his mobster friends from committing violent crimes murdering people while still maintaining his cover. The book is excellent and gives an insight as to how far undercover agents can operate outside the law. It's a great read and I would definitely recommend it. Movie with Johnny Depp and Al Pacino is quite good as well. Nice slow burn. Enough to not reveal any details on a credit. There was actually an IAMA from a few weeks ago where a former NYPD undercover cop talked about his experiences. He did drugs when he had to, beat people when he had to, etc. He pretty much did everything short of killing a man. I work at an antique show where there are a few retired undercover detectives as security. There's one in particular that always tells us about catching hookers. Apparently he would approach them, go back with them to their apartment, and when the police conveniently came 15 minutes later, he would get arrested with the girl as well. He wouldn't break character until court the next morning, where he would reveal himself as Officer Z. According to him, one time the cops were just a few minutes late, and he had to get all the way down to his underwear. He's a pretty cool cop. Edit. I'm just going on what I've been told. Everyone can stop telling me this is made-up bullshit, because I'm just telling the story as it was told to me. Heard in the UK some undercover cops amongst protest groups have have fathered children. They disappear from fear lives once the undercover operation had ended, but 20 years later the women children were told the truth about what happened. Not taking part in a crime like say a robbery, but still massive moral problem on how far they went when undercover. And now I want to research the psychological issues related to undercover cops and their identities in addition to those affected by the actions of the one undercover. It'd be interesting to see if female undercovers have the same freedoms or more restrictions as their male counterparts. As Sikroff said, it depends. My uncle is on his police department's drug task force. He doesn't do deep cover stuff, but on occasion make multiple buys from a low-level drug dealer to get in good with the guy and get to the supplier find out where he's making the stuff. For that low-cover job he has authority to purchase illegal drugs up to a certain dollar amount whatever has been allotted for the sting, and that's about it. For more deep cover jobs, like as others have pointed out, anybody who's interested should check the Joe Pistone documentary or read the book Donnie Brasco, or even see the movie, though it adds and subtracts a lot. But I'll continue. Deep cover jobs allow for more leeway, for obvious reasons. There are usually a few hard lines that they won't allow for any reason. Murder, rape, or similar violent crimes are at the top of that list. That's not to say the FBI or whoever won't happily make it look like they murdered someone, just won't let them do it. Jay Dobbins, for example, went undercover with the Hells Angels in Arizona after a brawl between the Hells Angels and Mongols Motorcycle Club in Nevada. As part of his initiation and to prove his worth as a prospect, they staged a murder of a Mongols member, sent video and pictures of the murder, and a bloodstained cut, the club vest, if you haven't watched Sons of Anarchy, along with photos of an ATF agent covered in cow blood and brains lying in a shallow grave.
In short, it all depends on the level of crime they're trying to use undercover means to stop. The only time undercover is generally used however, are in small-time organized criminal activity, drug dealing, prostitution, or in an organization with very closely guarded, closed-door policies that protect them from the usual means of investigation, such as the mob or motorcycle clubs. In general, undercover work isn't used for heavily because it's an unnecessary risk, as it's usually pretty easy for police to build cases without it. I know of at least one gun running case where RFID tags were used to track weapons, combined with aerial and physical surveillance was able to tie the gang to the crime, though I'm having trouble finding my source article now. It would depend on whether it is a movie for theatrical release, a direct-to-DVD movie, a made-for-cable network movie, a network television show, a cable television show, or a premium cable television show, and how the level of criminal involvement advances the plot. This is the best response here. I don't know about other countries, but in Britain each undercover officer will have someone who be handling them. They will be permitted to commit low-level crimes which are relevant to what they are trying to infiltrate. Buying drugs, petty theft. However they are required to ask their handler before committing any serious crime. The handler normally will have to go to someone higher. Probably someone in a chief inspector's position. Ultimately they will have the final word. In particularly severe cases they may have to go to the home secretary. However this happens rarely and usually when there could be political ramifications. A few other facts on this topic. Officers will not be put undercover in the area that they work for as they could risk being compromised by people they know. For example undercover officers working for the Liverpool Police Force may be used in Manchester or Leeds, but not the city where they work and live. Another interesting fact is that sometimes to make an undercover officer seem as believable as possible they will spend a month or two in prison so that if asked about their past they can give a believable story. Something something no Russian something something. Fun fact, cops don't have to tell you they're cops. No, it's not entrapment. How do you think sting operations work? <laughs>